With our rendering and lighting all set up, we'll now take a look at how to use render setup in Maya to efficiently render clay, wireframe, and AO passes for compositing using V-Ray as our render engine. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here's where we last left off and we have our character set up, texture set up, lighting all set up, and now we want to render out clay and wireframe in ambient occlusion. So the best way to do that is to use this right here, which is render setup. So if you hit this right next to the hypershade, it launches render setup. And what this is gonna do is going to set up all of the different material overrides for all the different layers. So right now you can say what we're working in is our master layer. So if I want to create a new layer and let's say I want to just do a clay, so we can say clay layer, we can go ahead and start that process. So I just created a new layer and once we create this new layer, I right click and do create collection. And once I have this, I just call this geo collection. Once I have this geo collection, I add in all of the geometry that I need. In this case, I want to include the geometry of the character, turntable, and everything. And then I want to include the backdrop. All right. So I go ahead and hit add. And then it goes ahead and does that. Now what I want to do is go ahead and right click collection and do create material override. So I go ahead and do that. And this for this material override, I can go ahead and do um, clay material. All right. So now with that, I need to go ahead and actually create a V-Ray clay material. So if I open up my hypershade, we can go ahead and start that process. Now what I want to do is simply create, hit this V-Ray icon down here. That's going to create a nice V-Ray material. I'm going to go ahead and give this a clay material property. So I have diffuse color and I'll just make this kind of a light diffuse and the reflection color, I'll make it a not pure white, but very bright. And then I'll drop the reflection glossiness down, you know, about maybe between 0.6 and 0.7. So that's all good there. And I'll call this clay underscore matte. All right, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and middle mouse drag clay mat on override material. And there it goes. It goes ahead and links that up. And you can see it's just using, it says V-Ray Material 4, it's SG service graph or service uh, group. And that's just linked to this here. All right, so let's see if this worked. So now if I go with this, with all this set up and I hit clay layer, hit the I icon and there you go. Everything looks correct. Now there is, um, thankfully it goes ahead and carries over our lighting and cameras, uh, there, our camera should, should stick. So if I hit I here, I'll go ahead and just do another or a test render. And of course we need to make sure that we are using the right camera. So position this in the right camera and there we go. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, now what I need to do is definitely bring down that clay, uh, clay material. It's very bright and getting kind of blown out here a little bit. And we can do that. I'm gonna enable IPR. And we're gonna bring over our hypershade, or you know what, we can just use our attribute editor. If I just select a simple object here that has the clay material, I can go here to clay mat and we can just drop this clay material down. All right, and so the lighting is, is helping out quite a bit there. And we can let that run. And if it's still a little bit too glossy, we can always bring down the reflection color and glossiness a bit. But I think this looks good. This is a very nice clay looking material and we're getting a lot of the lighting information to come in. So that's looking good there. So I'll go ahead and stop. And then what we want to do is essentially replicate this for all the other layers. So let's go ahead and create a, uh, a new one. So if I right click this and well, actually I just go ahead and create layer here. So I hit the create layer icon and then I want to type in um, AO layer for ambient occlusion. 
And then in this AO layer, again, create collection. Now for this one, I do wanna make sure to use geo collection. And we're gonna make sure to include, we can just do geo collection AO. And include the geo group and the plane group and hit add. And then for this, we'll do again, create material override. And then we need to go back to our hyper shape. And what I want to do is again, create a new V-Ray material. Actually for AO, you typically want to use a light material since ambient occlusion ignores lighting and a light material is fully self uh, illuminated. So we have this, we can do V-Ray light material underscore AO. And then here, is where we're gonna plug in our V-Ray Dirt. So I'm gonna go down to, actually we can just type in Dirt and there you go. So you can just click Dirt and that brings that in here and we can just uh, move this near our hypergraph, hypershade or the node. So we have V-Ray Light Material. I'm gonna middle mouse drag V-Ray Dirt over to color and then boom, it goes ahead and adds that there. Now, I for final renders, what I do is increase the subdivs to about eight, and I lower the radius maybe a little bit to about five, between five and eight, and then we can maybe increase the falloff to about 0.1. What, what, what are these values that are, I'm changing doing? Let me show you. I'll go ahead and I'll pull up a browser real quick, and you can see what they're doing here. So radius is obviously how far it spreads, and about 10. Um, and then if I increase it to 30, it'll spread even further. And then distribution is basically kind of you know, how, how it distributes, like essentially it's closer towards the perpendicular point, and then it spreads out as it goes uh, along the surface. And then here for fall off, you can see with no fall off, it, it spreads out and falls off quite a bit, and then it tightens it. So they're kind of similar, but they each have their own respective uh, values and you can kind of see um, how they work. So I'm going to again just use these values here and we'll just do a quick test. And I am going to leave the subdivs at 3 for the sake of render time but when I go to final I can increase that to 8 or 16. And we need to make sure to drag the V-Ray light material over to the override material. So go ahead and do that. Boom. That's done. I can hit the icon, eyeball, and we can see this. And there it goes. It goes ahead and uh, starts to render out and it's looking pretty good. So keep in mind uh, what you want to do with this. Um, if you want to change some of these settings, you certainly can. And if I wanted to tighten it up, I'm actually fine with this and I can tone it down uh, as I see fit in, in Photoshop. And now that I have this, I will go ahead and do the last one, which is going to be our uh, wireframe layer. So if I hit uh, create new layer in the render setup, I can do wireframe. And you guys, it's just the same thing. We're going to right click, create a collection, and we're going to do, you know, geo collection. Now for this one, and I'll just do WF for wireframe. I only want the geo of my character. So it's this guy here, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select that geo and then add. I'm not gonna include the background because I don't want the background wireframe to show up, all right? And then once I do that, I go ahead and create a material override. And now I go back to my hypershade. Let's go ahead and create a new V-Ray material. So I'll go ahead and create V-Ray material. And now we're getting a little bit messy here. So I'll go ahead and just display output connections here. And then for this one, I'm going to hit uh, wireframe MTL. And here, I want to make sure for diffuse color, I use V-Ray edges. So I'm going to type in the word edges or edge. And then we can see V-Ray edges. So I'm going to move this up and over. And we're going to plug this right in, middle mouse drag, to diffuse color. All right, great. Now, what's pretty nice, let me see, I should be able to switch this to V-Ray. Yeah, and you can kind of see this change here. And that applies to everything that we just created. So you can see the ambient occlusion here, um, the wireframe now, uh, but I wouldn't rely too much on it because we're gonna see how it's gonna look on our character. 
Now with V-Ray edges, I always go uh, black edges with white background. So that's so I can multiply that in Photoshop uh, or whatever uh, photo or video editing software. Pixels are fine as is. Um, if you're using world units, that's for environments, but they're fine as is. And then for pixels, you can bump it up, but one should be fine, you know, between one and two pixels. And of course, we want to go ahead and middle mouse drag wireframe material over to the override material, close that, hit the eyeball. And we can see that now we have that. Now, here's the thing about this though, for the wireframe is I need to make sure in this instance, I remove my history for my smooth face, okay? Otherwise, this is too, too many subdivisions. Um, so if I set the subdivisions to zero on everything, I'll be able to read the detail and edge flow a lot but easier. So by setting that to zero, you can see that uh, it will work out uh, much better. In some instances, there were some extra smooth faces put on there. So I can just make sure those get set to zero and you should be fine. And that's of course, if you didn't delete history, uh, if not, you can always revert back. So there, so I went ahead and added that. And then I can jump back to my view here and go ahead and do now, once I have wireframe enabled here, go ahead and do a render and let's see how that turns out. And there it goes. So it comes out really nice and really smooth and it's entirely up to you. Um, I mean, I would say do the low poly if you have it and then you can just uh, put that over. But sometimes I know there's some detail that happens once you subdivide. So like by setting this to one, that'll give me uh, some better detail uh, on my model. So I can just set these back to one and we can, you know, compare uh, how those look. Uh, it doesn't get too noisy as long as, you know, your original base mesh wasn't too high poly. You can see the eyes, that's where things start to get a little bit lost there. Okay, so that looks good there. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and render each one of these layers and then show you how I will composite them. So I will just double check my render settings and for this sample, I'm just gonna use 540 and we can go to the V-Ray tab, change this to bucket and set the threshold to 0 0.02 since I'm using denoiser. And then I'm gonna leave the GI settings um, low. So, but again, you can always crank these up for, for final renders. And yeah, I will just go ahead and render each one of these views out and we'll take these into Photoshop. All right, so I went ahead and rendered out the final passes. So we have our wireframe, our ambient occlusion, our clay, and then our beauty pass or the textured layered pass. Once that's done, um, if you are using animation like I showed you in the last one, you would just make sure obviously that animation is enabled, that you're using the right camera and use batch render, and then it'll output to the right folder. Since I'm just using the V-Ray frame buffer, I simply just went ahead and saved all of the four passes out here. And to save those out, just in case you don't know, so you can save them right here, um, hitting the save icon and then save them out as a PNG. I go to Photoshop, here's my beauty layer or the textured layer. And then I can go ahead now and bring in the rest of the passes. So ambient occlusion, and then we have clay, and then we have wireframe. So wireframe's nice, ambient occlusion is nice, uh, cause we can start to multiply them over. So if I go ahead and create a folder and in this folder, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the wireframe, clay, and texture. So we can say textured. And then ambient occlusion, I'll go ahead and set that to multiply. So now you can see what that's doing. Now I'll go ahead and start with just the clay so we can really see the detail. So if you're going and you're looking to be a modeling specialist and you know, you know how to UV, you know how to texture, but you want your special to, specialty to be uh, modeling, well, this is where clays and ambient occlusion are gonna be the best type of render for you because you can see how much detail is coming in. And this is what you wanna showcase in your portfolio. Obviously, if you have your textures, 
ambient occlusion is going to work fine. It's going to just help accentuate all of your renders. Now, you also have wireframe where you can also take that and do a multiply with that. So you can continue to multiply that. Um, it would be better if you actually set it with a lit shader, just like we did the ambient occlusion. But in this case, this is fine. I can actually leave this on normal uh, and we can even give this a mask. So if I went ahead and just grabbed this lasso, polygonal lasso tool, and maybe just did kind of this uh, group over here, this selection, we can create this now into a mask. And I can go ahead and create this as a mask here by hitting this icon at the bottom, which is a mask icon, hit invert, and then we can just go ahead and feather that a bit and we can see how that's gonna give us a nice transition. So you can see by combining ambient occlusion with wireframe, clay, and textured, I mean, it's gonna help out uh, everything down the road. So it just gives you complete and, over con and utter control. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, how to, to use these different passes, how to use render setup, and then kind of icing on the cake is bringing it all together with Photoshop. Um, yeah. So if you enjoyed the video tutorial, uh, like, and subscribe is always helpful, uh, as I continue to grow the content. So, uh, always appreciate it and stay safe and I'll see you guys later. Bye.